Have you ever wanted to get into Monster Hunter, but you didn't really have a PS4, Xbox, or a PC? You know, now that I say that out loud, that does kind of suck. But hey, maybe you just really play Smash and you just want payback for all the times that Rathios always disrespects you and you got turned off by the data graphics from Generations Ultimate. Hey, well, I got the perfect solution for you. Monster Hunter Rise, the game that lets you play as a monster slayer that wields impossibly large weapons that also zips around like Spider-Man all over the place and ride into the battle on a ninja dog against a platypus boulder monster, a ice blade wielding a Abominable snow bear and an evil wizard tiger dragon that all leads up to you thinking what the hell were these people smoking when they came up with this stuff but with all of that set aside this is my post hype and honeymoon phase review of this game and if you like that type of concept then make sure you go ahead and like and subscribe and make sure you turn on the little bell because YouTube will probably not show you any of my videos whenever I get to upload them but with all that out of the way, let me go ahead and get into the video. If you are new to Monster Hunter or have only ever seen gameplay of it and have never experienced it yourself, then you might be wondering what's the real point of the game. Because to the outside it might seem like as though it's boring, it's what's the point of something that you don't even get really good loot from or anything that's unique. But that's where Monster Hunter is a bit deceptive because the entire point of the entire game is to basically engage in a fight that's more akin to a dance with the monster itself than just beating it and get loot. The reward is the fight itself. And really after playing at least two iterations of this game, I can honestly say that it is among, I would say the top three best gameplay loot of any series I've ever played and I've gotten a chance to play quite a few. Anyways, I really had just wanted to take the time to really address why you should really give this game a try if you've never played a Monster Hunter game before, because you certainly won't be disappointed. Now, for everything that follows is for everyone that has played a Monster Hunter game, or you're still intrigued enough to follow along and you want to know more specific details. And now, with the threat of possibly sounding a little disjointed, as well as not having really a good segue for this, let me talk about the one thing that I don't think many people that have already released the reviews are talking about, and that's really the comparison between Rise and World. Because Rise is going to be releasing on PC basically a year later from its release on the Switch, which when that time comes, it will be a slaughter fest for Capcom, because you can't really compare Rise to World because World was developed for much more powerful systems than the Nintendo Switch. So it's not just the textures that are downgraded essentially, it's really the entire environment and just the amount of bandwidth that you can fit all the models and extra animations and everything into the actual game itself. And so I feel like it's going to get way more heat than it really should whenever that time comes, but we can't really do anything about that. So it's what it is. I thought I would say it, and let's move on to the next section. The Monster Hunter franchise has had quite a bit of a interesting history with innovations within their games. If you've played some of the older games, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about whenever I mention underwater combat. It didn't really work out, well, at least for that game that they implemented it for, but they did change it up and include the same monsters, and they got it all fixed. And I kind of feel like, while they didn't mess up with anything in Rise, I feel like there are a few things I need to talk about that I'm not sure if anyone else has said, but yeah, th this is where that section comes in. So. Let me first talk about what I really do like and I think should actually be implemented in future games and then about the other stuff. So there are three main areas that really does stick out whenever it comes to the stuff that I think they need to keep. And the first one is how this iteration of the buddy system, because I really love the Palamutes. I think that they're really more interesting than the Palicos. But again, I'll talk more about that whenever I get to the buddy system itself. So the second one is the changes to the canteen, because I think that they stripped down all of the useless complexity and just give 
give you all the stuff that you really need. And they remove the annoying feature of if you cart, it just takes away your bonuses and you have to manage your extra health some other way. And they basically took away that, which is a really nice feature. And the last one is how they handle decorations. While I don't like there being RNG in this game, period, it's far better to be able to craft decorations than to just have to constantly farm the sheer volume that you need to make your builds work. So let's get all the stuff that I didn't like out of the way now. So let's talk about how short this game is because it's quite short. In fact, I think about 20 to 24 missions is all you really need to do to hit that uh, roll credits. And after that, that's where my second problem with this game is, and that's how they transition from low and story quests to high rank. Because the high rank missions aren't truly that difficult. They're really normal difficulty for the game series, but everything before that was really easy. So if you've never played, you might... Uh not have as good of a time transitioning later into the game as you would otherwise. In fact, the biggest problem with high rank missions is the fact that they're all scaled for multiplayer. If you go in there by yourself, you can do it. It's just going to be very annoying how long it's going to take for you to actually whittle that monster down. My next issue is the silkbind and switch skills. And it isn't really the problem with the skills, it's more like there are really, really, really great ones, and then there are just like, why is this even in the game? And a good example of this is this one skill on the Great Sword that is a gap closer, and it costs two wire bugs when it, all it does is the normal wire bug dash, which you're already putting your weapon away to do that. So why are you even using two for what you can do for one? And not only that, but you're having to choose that skill over other ones that are, are quintessentially your big damage dealing attack, but now you can reposition. That's the other option that you're having to choose from. So why is something like that in the game compared to all the other skills? And that's just the greatsword. Every single weapon has some instance of this. And even on top of that, there are some weapons that just have really bad skills all around. So I feel like they should have really spent time and more effort into all the skills instead of just giving this illusion of choice and wasting their own energy on stuff that they could have just put into other aspects of the game. And that brings me to my next source of aggravation, and that's the fact that players can still stagger you with their own attacks. Not only that, but their companions can also stagger you with their attacks because they had the idea to bring in your buddies to go along with multiplayer, which is a fun idea, but they should at least turn off their ability to also stagger you whenever you're trying to attack the monster. Because now you don't just have four people trying to get to your target, you have eight characters essentially. And there just isn't enough room without someone being able to hit you and you can't even go through your combo. And it's bad enough that I was carded because I couldn't bring up my guard because someone's Palamute was staggering me from behind. And it's just like, why didn't they just turn that off? I'm saying something about this because there is a history of players griefing others using this mechanic in World and in other games that Capcom had to do something about it. And it's still here. So I don't know why they keep this in the game. It doesn't really hurt the gameplay at all to take it out. But moving on to the last big thing, and that's kind of the wonky handling of the item wheel. Because sometimes the item will activate and sometimes it won't. And even whenever it does activate, there is such a delay that you're always wondering, okay, is it gonna work or do I need to redo it? and in the middle of a fight, that really doesn't feel good. Now, all of this is really small issues, but over the course of the three weeks that I've been playing this game, this is what has consistently been aggravating me about this, which I suppose can also say is which this is really good of a game if this is the only thing I have wrong with it. But I do see them putting in the effort to polish certain parts of this game, and then they just kind of stop in other areas, which just is just aggravating to me. So that's pretty much what I have basically to say about the things that I don't like about this game. Let's move on to more specific parts. So this next section is all about gameplay, what you can expect, what they've done differently in this game, and so forth. And let me tell you, there's a lot of differences in this game than previous installations. And a lot of that has to do or revolve around balancing for the use of wire bugs. And so with that, let me start with the wire bug system because it essentially makes every single weapon the insect glaive. So if you don't like insect glaive, at all. You don't like 
aerial combat at all, you're probably not going to be a fan of this game. Now, if you're neutral, it's not going to really hurt. It does actually make a lot of things more fluid, but me personally, I don't think it necessarily is a good way for Monster Hunter to go forth, but it makes this iteration of the Monster Hunter franchise really fun. Now, how does the Wirebug system really change the game? Well, first off, it gives you so many more options for recovery whenever you get hit, as well as it just gives a lot more mobility to every single weapon. And because of that, the maps have changed slightly because there's far more verticality because you can just reach there by just zooming up twice or three times on your Wirebug to get to a higher platform. This also changes the fact that you can't mount monsters anymore in traditional sense. You have to essentially knock the creature out out to be able to use wire bugs to basically control them like a puppet. Now, with how Rise does it right now, it seems a little bit too formulaic because they just replace a turf war with a little skirmish that knocks the creature out for you and you're guaranteed at least one of these per mission. And again, it comes off a little too formulaic for me and it seems a little contrived that it happens that often, which again, turf wars don't happen nearly as often as, as I said, because of the wire bugs and the fact that you can ride them now. But I wanna shift gears and talk more about the environment itself because there's a lot of changes and I think that they did a really good job, a fantastic one, with what they were handed. I mean, the Switch doesn't have much power behind it, but they designed the environment in such a way that they don't need all of the extra fancy geometry or the swaying plants and whatnot. It's very quaint and very cozy and that's inevitably also the biggest problem I think is that you will notice that these maps feel very small and there are reasons for that. Mainly because you can move around them so quickly you forget that they're actual size because they are stacked very vertically. Many of them at least has a subterranean form of it, like a middle ground and basically the roof to the maps. So don't expect a big sprawling map like you would in World in, or in other games, but the flow of the overall design is more than enough to make up for it. And speaking of flow, even weapons like the Greatsword you'll notice is much quicker and much more fluid than in previous iterations. And the interesting thing here is that I'm finding that I'm enjoying playing the Greatsword quite a bit even as a charge blade main. The really funny part about this is that I hated how the Greatsword played in world. And so I think it's really kind of interesting and a good thing of how the weapons have been changed up because you're probably going to like a lot more weapons because a lot of the um, slowness that some players don't really like about certain weapons have kind of been mitigated by the wire bugs. And speaking about other surprising things, they've brought back previous mechanics and gameplay elements for certain weapons that were in Ultimate and older games into this game as well, which unfortunately I don't know too much about because I haven't gotten a chance to play their older games. But I understand that there is basically an auto loading feature now with the bow as well as an old move set for the sword and shield that's been given a new coat of paint so to speak. Now there's a lot more changes, very subtle but still very impacting that I can keep going into but I don't know all of the weapons well enough to be able to do them justice so I'll really leave the weapon section at an end here and move on to something that I think is actually the most important thing about this review and about Monster Hunter. It's the monsters. So how do they do? Well I'd say pretty awesome. Everything that you expect that for a Monster Hunter game to deliver for the monsters they pretty well nailed. Everything from the animation, sound design, the model, everything. But with like everything in this game, there is a little bit of an exception because, well, it's Monster Hunter Rise. If you haven't really figured that out, there's always this one caveat. And with the monsters, it's really what they did with the rampages, which they've done some really good things, but I think that they've done some things that are inherently not Monster Hunter. And it has to do with the rampage mode because it's a fun mode, but it's quintessentially a brawl plus a tower defense, and that's just not really Monster Hunter. Even though people like it, and I mean, I like the mode, it's just not Monster Hunter. Now, the one thing that I do like is the apex monsters, which they're slowly adding in to the game. Right now, there's pretty much, I think, three added, which they are fun fights. Now, the last thing that I really do have to kind of say is that I think they really nailed the boss fight for the post-game monster. I don't really want to show it because it is a really nice fight, but it's a big spoiler. But with that, there's one last system that I really want to talk about that really needs mentioning. 
And it's this lovable guy right here. Yes, I am talking about the Palamutes. Now I gotta say, if there's one thing that they keep in Monster Hunter Rise into new additions, it's the Palamutes. Because they make your life so much easier on hunts. I mean, who wouldn't want to be able to ride while they sharpen their blades or drink a potion while you're really still engaged with the monster and not have to worry about just walking around? But is there any reason that you would want to take a Palico? over the Palamutes, and well, yeah, because the Palicos in this game are pretty awesome. You basically get two cats that can plunder blade, heal, and stun the monster, and blow it up if you want. So yeah, it, it's a hard choice when figuring out which one you want to take. But to be serious and honest, I really do think that they did do the buddy system very balanced and well. And so let's wrap this review up, shall we? Is this game worth it? Well, yes. I would say basically all of the Monster Hunter games are worth it, it's just the question of at what price point is it worth it? And for me, whenever Rise first came out, I would have pretty much said wait until there's more content or there's a deal. Well, now that 3.0 is basically ready to come out, and it probably will be out by the time that you see this review, I'm going to say that yes, there's enough content to warrant the full price tag on this game. But there you go, that is my Monster Hunter Rise review. Now, I am also planning on doing a noob to pro beginner's guide that is based off of the best strategies that we have as a community for this game, and not based on pre-release game version as well as newly released game version. So yeah, I'm working on that alongside of finishing up my Monster Hunter World series. So stay tuned for that. Also, let me know what other games you would like me to review, not just upcoming games, but games that you think are still good that needs a review in 2021 or in the future. But you guys have been awesome and I will see you in the next video.